Hi there, welcome to Nephi Invest. Thought it's time to give it a bit of an update to CV Check, T code CV1. Hadn't looked at this company for at least six months, and I thought since this company has been operating cash flow positive for about eight quarters in a row, is growing fairly slowly, I thought it was time to have a look in to see how this company has been progressing. Now, when I put in the T code CV1 into Comsec, I had a little bit of a surprise. There was no code with that T code on the ASX. And the reason behind that is because this company has changed their name. So let's have a look at what CV Check now is known as. CV Check is now known as Kinetico with a T code KYP. And as I went through uh, the announcement, which went through the reasons behind this change name, it sort of makes sense to me. Overall, I don't like companies changing their name. I like companies just to stick with what they've got because that is the name I know the company as. In fact, there is one company which I don't follow anymore at all because they've changed the name three times over the past 10 years. And it seems like the only reason they change the name is just so they can get new investors on board because this company is an absolute disaster. In fact, I don't even know what they're called now. It used to be called Allied Health. Then they changed the name to Ad Ademus or something like that. And now they changed the name to something else. And lo and behold, when I had a look at that company, the valuation of the company was over $200 million. So it looks like a new breed of investors, because they changed the name, likes what they're doing. Uh, rant ended. Anyway, Kinetico now, and one of the reasons uh, CV Check changed the name to Kinetico is because CV Check is actually a product. And because they are diversifying, to be known as CV Check, the product, is not, not really true to what the company is doing. So Kinetico wants to be known as the leading provider of Know Your People Solutions, hence KYP. And maybe that's why they came up with the name Kinetico. I have no idea. Its services encompass pre-employment screening, verification of services and workforce compliance management. And this is not only in Australia, but also around the world. Kinetico, as CV Check, was founded in 2004 and listed on the ASX. In September 2015, I can't believe that is over seven years ago. I actually still remember when CV Check did list on the ASX. And you'll see why I still remember CV Check when we look at the chart, the weekly chart for this company. The current CEO is Michael Ivanchenko, and the largest shareholder for Kinetico is Australian Ethical Investments. They have 11.4% stake in this company, and that percentage hasn't changed over the past six months. I think the last time I looked at this company, was in March of this year, and in Australian Ethical Investments really haven't bought any more shares or sold any shares, so they're pretty solid with this company. The current market of Kinetico is 43 million. That's at a share price of 9.9 .9 cents. Share price has almost halved over the past year, so the valuation is looking a little bit more attractive, particularly for a company uh, that is uh, operating cash flow positive and profitable. And the T code is K. YP, not KPY. Now let's have a look at the most recent Appendix 4C for Kinetico. Now, usually I like to look at the Appendix 4C one year ago. So September quarter, the first quarter for financial year 22. But I've decided just to go straight to the most recent quarter, the first quarter for financial year 23, because I have all the information in regards to the previous quarter right here on this slide. Now receipts up $1.4 million from last year. And last year, they were slightly operating cash flow positive. Now, in this particular quarter, they were operating cash flow positive by only 233000 but they are positive. Now, if you take into account non-current assets, not sure exactly what non-current assets is, uh, but for this particular quarter, they spent $996,000 on non-current assets. It could be research and development, that sort of thing, because you don't see any payments for research and development in this particular or in the operating activities. And one year ago, they also spent about $600,000, $700,000 on non-current assets. So I'd like to, to take that into account when I look at the free cash flow. So if you do take that into account, Kinetico is not free cash flow positive, but they are operating cash flow positive. Now, they did increase their receipts by $1.4 million, but the spending for the or over the past year has increased by a greater rate than the receipts growth. So product manufacturing operating costs up 500,000, staff costs up 500,000, advertising marketing costs up 400,000, and administration costs up 
150,000. So they haven't quite reached a very important inflection point where their seats are growing at a quicker rate than the cost. They haven't quite achieved that just yet. And that is one of the most important inflection points for a company, in my opinion. And when I see this happening, and I think when the market sees this happening for Kinetico, I think that's when you might get a share price and valuation re-rating. Now, the cash on hand is dropping. It's actually fallen from 12.2 million to 11.1 million. Now, it's really interesting. This company is currently, currently doing a share buyback. Not sure exactly why. The most likely reason is management feels this company is undervalued at current valuations, and they're not concerned about the burn rate in their cash. So even though they are not free cash flow positive, they're probably confident they won't burn so much cash that they will have to do a capital raising in the future, unless, of course, they do a significant acquisition. Now, it's really interesting that Kinetico is, are doing a share buyback right now. And in the commentary in this particular Appendix 4C, they mentioned they have bought back 1.5 million shares for a total consideration of $167,000. Now, only 18 months ago, in the March quarter 2022, which is the calendar year 2021, they actually did a capital raising. And one of the reasons they did capital raising was because of an acquisition. And you'll be able to see uh, the influences of that acquisition on cash receipts and revenue when we look at the cash receipts history in the next slide. But this capital raising to fund the acquisition, they actually raised $10.5 million at 16 and a half cents. So right now they are buying back shares at about 10 cents or even less than 10 cents. So they are buying back shares at a considerably lower price than when they raised capital uh, 18 months ago. And that is actually a really good thing for shareholders because this company is buying back shares at a cheaper price than, cheaper price than when they raised capital. And you don't want to see the opposite doing a share buyback at a significantly, significantly higher price when they raise capital. That is not beneficial to shareholders in the long run. Now let's have a look at the receipts history for Kinetico. And this goes all the way back to when the company listed on the ASX back in 2015. And to be honest with you, when they listed on the ASX and through the next about three or so years, receipts were growing at a nice, really consistent rate. In fact, they increased from 1.2 million in the first quarter to 3.3 million by the June quarter 2018. And it was a fairly nice, consistent rise. But from that June quarter, or even the March quarter 2018, all the way through to the March quarter 2021, receipts were going sideways. There was a slight increase of $400,000 over a three-year period. And then they made that significant acquisition in the March quarter 2021. And you can just see receipts significantly grow, growing in one quarter from 3.6 million to 6.3 million. That is because of one uh, acquisition. And receipts have grown from then from 6.3 million to 7.5 million. But you can see receipts have really gone sideways over the past four quarters. So I can't really say there is much organic growth for Kinetico right now. Really, the only reason they have seen significant growth in receipts over the past few years is because of that one acquisition. So I would like to see some breakdown in regards to organic growth compared to acquisition growth. And if they did that breakdown, I don't think you would see much organic growth for this company. Now let's have a look at the charts for Kinetico. And the first chart we're going to look at is the weekly chart from when they list on the ASX way back in September 2015. And I do remember what happened with this company because there was a little bit of hype in CV check back then. In fact, the share price rose from 20 cents to about 75 cents in a fairly short period of time. When I say fairly short, I'm talking about a five-week period after they listed on the ASX. And that was a share price high for this company. And then the share price absolutely took a dive. In fact, it went from 75 cents all the way down to less than 10 cents by the start of 2017. So that initial hype died away fairly quickly. And then you could probably argue the share price has been going sideways ever since 2017. When we've seen period of times where there's been a little bit of hype in this company, but that hype eventually does die away. So we've seen share price rise as high as about 24 cents in July 2019 and around about 20 cents two times in 2021, towards the start of 2021 and towards the end of 2021 as well. 
and the share price low we've seen in this company is around about four to five cents. That was towards the end of 2018 and also during the COVID-19 financial panic. So we are heading towards that now. The share price of uh, Kinetico right now is in a downtrend and you'll be able to see that downtrend when we look at the daily chart. So let's have a look at the daily chart right now. And as we take a look at the daily chart for Kinetico, this goes back to June 2021. And the share price did reach a high during this period in August, September of uh, 2021 at about 19, 19 and a half cents. So the share price has more than halved since then if you compare the high to the lows. And the low in Kinetico share price was reached on the 1st of November when the share price actually dipped to 8.2 cents. So that is a medium to long-term low. The last time we have seen a share price this low was way back in 2020. But when the share price did dip on the 1st of November to that 8.2 cents, there was a little bit of buying coming in. So the market was saying, we are seeing some value with this company at 8.2 cents. And the share price has rallied back to 10 cents. And as, I, as I'm talking, on the no not or the third of November, the share price of Kinetico has closed at 9.9 cents. That's all I have for this video, looking at Kinetico September quarter results. Now, to be fair, when they did release their quarter results, they will still notice CV check. So you could argue Kinetico have yet to release their first quarter results. We'll have to wait to January when they release their December quarter results. Although technically this company is the same company. They've just gone through a name change, but really they're the same or basically the same company. If you have any further insights, what Kinetico might mean, does it have something to do with kinetic energy or something like that? I love to hear it. I do know what the TIG code means, know your people, KYP. But if you do have any further insights on the name Kinetico, I'd love to hear it. So leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.